Hi there again and welcome back. Now, this is the first of two videos I want to put together to discuss and demonstrate how tracks can be used in our rehearsals. Now, I know the very subject of tracks divides opinion in the musical theatre community at the moment, but whether they are tracks supplied by the license holder or tracks you make yourself for rehearsal purposes, it is today's technology that has given us this, what I consider to be a huge step forward in teaching of the music to our companies. So in these two videos then, I want to talk about creating and using tracks specifically for rehearsals. During the past 12 months, I've put together a few sets of rehearsal tracks and have identified two very different styles of such tracks. Very different because they are very different musical style productions. In this video, we'll look at how I've put together these tracks and the decisions I've made while creating them. And then in the next video, we'll look at how I prepare the tracks in the software I've used for rehearsals and how I've managed them during the rehearsal period itself. So then, let's get those tracks recorded. For those of us that have been leading the music for some years, you, like I, may remember setting up a microphone, connecting it to your portable cassette player, yeah, remember them, and start to record, usually the dance music for the choreographer for whatever production you're working on. These were the only recordings you needed to do then, and of course it saved you or your pianist having to attend every dance rehearsal. It would then come to the rehearsals with the orchestra or band, and everyone, well, mainly the choreographer, would complain that they weren't the same tempo of what you recorded six months previously, or how everything now sounds very different. Well, today there is a huge amount of technical help to assist us in creating a set of rehearsal recordings, which will not only give your company a good idea of what the band will sound like, but will offer a consistent form of musical backing that can be used by members to learn their parts or by the rest of the production team at any rehearsal you self, yourself can't attend. Now, I know some of you will be using or have used the software some licensing companies can provide you with that supply all the rehearsal recordings to assist during rehearsals. Music Theatre International, for instance, uses their MTI player using their software called Rehearse Score, for instance or another company supplying tracks right on cue services and their show ready software. These can be very useful and maybe I'll cover those in another video. But in the two productions I'm demonstrating here, I have produced two very different sets of tracks. Let me explain why. You could say that our musical productions fall into two categories. The first being a glitzy production with show-stopping numbers that have large production numbers in included and have the audiences toe-tapping throughout and leaving the auditorium singing the tunes. Then there are those musicals where the music is kind of secondary and is only there to support the storytelling and create the mood of the piece rather than the so-called in-your-face production numbers. The two musicals I'm using to demonstrate is Kinky Boots, music by Cindy Lauper, and Calendar Girls the Musical, music by Take That's Gary Barlow. And for those of you that knows these two musicals, you can appreciate how very different they are. Taking the first of those, Kinky Boots, another reason to create rehearsal tracks is to give your company a true sense of rhythmical feel. Trying to do rock pop type musicals like this just by using a piano in your rehearsals is nigh on impossible. Well, it's not impossible, but it, it doesn't help in the learning. And you'll find the choreographer uses the latest cast recording anyway to give that sense of rhythmical feel to their rehearsals. To assist in creating such recordings, many more modern type musicals have supplied scores that give a huge amount of information of what is playing at any one time, and therefore 
offers all kinds of indications as to how you would go about putting any recording together. So armed with the array of virtual instruments, let's take a look at how I put together one of the tracks from this musical. So then I thought we'd start by just taking a look at this score. Um, this is the production number uh, 11, Sex is in the Heel, which for those that don't know the musical is one of the big dance and production numbers. Um, and this score is the keyboard one and the conductor score, which I said earlier, contains a huge amount of information. So, um, for instance, if we look from bar 108 here, we've got an alto sax, then a trombone is added, trumpet is added there. We've got um, um, keyboard two um, and the violins, because I know there is a violin um, and a cello actually in this orchestration, uh, doing some rapid uh, fast strings along here. Uh, we've got the cello there producing this line. We've got keyboard um, two, uh, which is doubling up a bass at this point, and the drums is taking that rhythmical pattern. Um, we've got more horns starting here. Um, and if we go over the page, we can see the octave strings. There's, what I'm saying is there's a huge amount of information that we can use. Now, you can choose to spend as much time as you want to ensure that this is a fine reproduction. Um, or you could just choose to have just a piano or just um, have a rhythm with a basic bass line and, and piano going. Or you can add as much as you want. The important thing I'm trying to demonstrate here is that um, to give a true rhythmical feel for your dancers um, and for your company will help enormously in the rehearsal process. So given all this information, this is how I then transferred it into my recording software and my door of, um, of choice is Cubase. If you don't use Cubase, it doesn't matter. The vast majority of um, um, of doors will operate exactly the same way. Um, I want to start first of all about talking yet again about templates in doors. So um, once you start a musical and you've started to put all these tracks together, it is useful to create a template, a template uh, to include all the instrumentation that you know is in the score or the or the instruments that you're going to be using in your band ultimately. Um, so um, this template, I've broken it down into the following here. So I've got a lead vocal, a top vocal and a bottom vocal. That's just going to be a, um, um, a, a piano line just to thump out the vocals so that you can then break them down and give the bottom line or the top line or the middle line, whatever it's going to be um, to the individual um, soloists that, or, or company members that are going to be singing that line. Um, all those in red then are then piano, I've got a piano accompaniment and sometimes a, a second track for adding a bass piano as well. Uh, those on their own won't sound a great deal. So I also went to the extent of creating some um, other folder tracks here, a synth keys track. So um, I know that um, the keys two player and keys one player, to be honest, in this particular production, um, we've got a lot of patch changes, lots of different uh, synth sounds. We've got um, um, we've got a synth bass. We've got um, a synth clav. Uh, we've got um, a saw pad there. Just going through these, got an analog saw. We've got a lot of um, session strings. And then we've got, in this particular number anyway, we've got some arps, not harps, arps. <laughs> fill out some of the, um, some of the um, instrumentation. Um, I've then got uh, two drum kits, um, a general MIDI drum kit and an EZ drummer kit that I sometimes use. Um, what does that sound like? Yeah, it sounds like any other drum kit, doesn't it? Let's have a look what the rhythm we've got. Here. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, we've also got um, a folder of some guitars. So we've got a bass guitar there. 
and later on I think we've got some um, some rhythmical guitars as well later on in the number if we scroll down further there's no wi uh, woodwind um, in this temp in this um, recording anyway uh, brass I think we've got a couple of uh, um, brass lines a bass uh, trombone and some trumpets um, and it looks like I've got another keys folder here what's in there I've forgotten oh yes another synth bass um, and then I think um, later on in the number or perhaps before oh we've got an accordion at some point as well so given all those um, uh, um, um, instruments I can create some kind of template basically what I've done I've opened up my orchestral template and added to it and I've not taken out the stuff I'm not going to use so I could for instance take out all those woodwinds and all the instruments that are, that are here with the track but not being used but I haven't done in this instance okay so uh, those are the instrument um, libraries that I've used um, like I say the vocal tracks now it's a good idea I always think right at the onset of rehearsals if you've got a lot of company singing um, to decide whether or not you're going your company is able to sing all the harmonies that's written in the um, production or whether or not you're going to cut your cloth accordingly um, and well simplify some of the parts singing um, sometimes that gets a better performance and a better result um, I'm a great believer in not flogging a dead horse week after week after week if you know at the back of your mind that they're not going to get these harmonies anyway so simplify them so um, in this particular um, instance I decided that certainly for this number anyway it was going to be a lead vocal line um, a, then a top backing vocal and a bottom um, um, backing vocal. Um, when it comes to in musical numbers any vamps, something that goes round and round when you're waiting for dialogue, um, when it comes to producing um, uh, rehearsal tracks specifically, what I try to do is I try to estimate how many repeats we're going to use uh, to fill out that amount of dialogue. Now I sometimes get that wrong and after a few rehearsals I'll, I'll be able to establish roughly how many um, uh, repeats it needs to be. Um, you will find that, and I think I've said this before in, in future, in, sorry, in, in previous videos, that uh, once you get into rehearsal and the actors get to know the amount of time that they've got to do this dialogue and it's X number of uh, repeats, that it's a learning curve for both parties and you'll soon find out that they, they just fit it anyway. Um, so don't worry too much about, about vamps in this instance. So I made a decision quite early on that what I would try to do is, is give a, a fuller uh, representation of what the band was going to sound like anyway. So if I bring back uh, my score, um, starting from here, bar 104, if I then start the track, we can follow it. Let's have a go, see what happens. <laughs> So you see what I'm talking about, um, quite full. Um, I did find that, um, certainly in my experience, that young, some younger members of companies um, do find that given uh, as full a recording as possible gives an added confidence to them. Um, 
Once I've got these recordings together, I will then mix them down as MP3s. Now, the reason I'm using MP3s and not any higher resolution um, is because MP3s are easily transferable um, when it comes to file sharing platforms. Um, and I think it's useful. Um, I've, I've used things like Dropbox or um, whatever the Gmail version is. Um, to um, share files um, and if anything um, is picked up at rehearsals where we're going to slow something down or we're going to change something I can make the alteration and then just update uh, the file sharing platform so everyone that has access to that um, can then get a hold of the new track. Um, you'll notice there I just played, I, I, I um, activated the vocal lines as well. What I would normally do, of course, if I was provided just a vocal line or a file to help a part learn um, just their line, um, then I would bring the levels of the back in right down and then make sure that the, the vocal line itself is quite, is quite um, prominent in whatever I'm going to send um, the, uh, um, the, uh, the performer. So that's um, a brief look at how I've put a very in-your-face, full-on rhythmical back in for rehearsal purposes. I mentioned earlier that the other production that I've been working on recently is Calendar Girls the Musical. Now, for those that don't know this work, it is about a group of ladies in the north of England raising money for a cancer charity by producing a nude calendar. It's a comedy, yes, but also covers some serious subjects of personal loss, abuse and cancer. With subject matter like that, the music has to be second to the story. And the piece is indeed written in such a way with a huge amount of underscore. The version I was supplied with was orchestrated for piano, keyboard two using mainly strings and guitar, two brass players, bass and drums. So a much more smaller sound than Kinky Boots. Because of this then, I decided that I would just supply a set of piano-only backings for rehearsal purposes. However, what was also supplied by the license holder of this musical is, well for certain numbers anyway, some pre-recorded backing tracks of brass band, strings and additional percussion to fill out the sound along with the click track and this I wanted to incorporate when putting together these rehearsal tracks. For this musical, everything is much simpler. You can see by the score, there's very little information when it comes to what's playing at any one time, basically because there's, well, less than a quarter of the number of players playing. Um, so uh, given the fact that it's a story um, covering some sensitive, um, storylines um, and like I said before there's a lot of piano underscoring um, I was I decided quite early on that for rehearsal purposes this time certainly when I wasn't going to be at rehearsals um, I was just going to supply um, piano only recordings um, and this is the opening number and perhaps one of the better known numbers um, from the uh, from the musical itself Yorkshire uh, you can see that it starts out with a cornet playing um, a, a motif that we hear throughout the musical um, then the character John sings this line here unaccompanied um, before um, before um, the band comes in again and we've got this motif there again over some dialogue before he starts to sing on the following page. You will also note, and I'll talk about this in a while, that throughout this particular score, the numbers that um, have an additional uh, backing that's been supplied by the licensing company um, was, was always noted in the score as to when the click starts. More about that later. So um, given the simplicity of this, like I say, I decided I would start with just um, 
uh, piano only recordings again I've used a template like previously so um, this template included at the top here all the audio files that were, that were sent by the by the company itself so um, we had um, a click the click um, <laughs> sounds horrendous actually but the click uh, was this Yeah, okay. Um, we also had some brass and percussions and strings um, and sometimes some sound effects. In this instance, it was birdsong, which I'll come to in a minute. So those are all the um, additional um, sounds um, and tracks outside what the band were going to be playing and what I was going to be providing for rehearsal purposes. Then the blue tracks here, um, rehearse, what I call rehearsal tracks, um, in its simplistic form, it's basically um, a piano accompaniment um, with the girls and the men and sometimes the vocal melody um, uh, played on separate tracks. So I can supply um, the soloist or the, the company th their particular line at any one time. So um, we started um, with um, a motif. I'll just show you that again. So here we are. There's the motif playing along for a few more bars before the soloist John comes in and starts to sing his line one more year in Yorkshire. Before everything then comes in a little bit, a little bit further on. Here we go. And then at bar 39, he starts to sing. And I recorded the entire musical just using piano like that. Well, no, actually, I didn't. What I supplied the company was a set of piano tracks like that. Very straightforward. But then, of course, I had to incorporate what the licensing company had sent. Um, and this includes, like I say, a brass track for this particular number, uh, a percussion track and a strings track. And if I, if I just solo those um, three, for instance, what was supplied was this. Plus this horrible click. I'm not going to go into detail as to how I incorporated this in Cubase because every door will operate slightly differently when it comes to that. But when it comes to the show, obviously it's more than just the piano and we started adding um, um, other um, effects like this the bird song, for instance. So when it was all put together and we'll mute all the piano, I think we'll mute all the rehearsal tracks, we started with the bird song coming in and then we added things like a fugal horn and then John sings his line and then everything comes in So a much simpler way of providing tracks. So creating tracks for use in rehearsals isn't as problematic as it once was. And with the software and instruments available nowadays, if you choose to, you can give a reasonably accurate reproduction of, of what your music will sound like once your band is in attendance. But you might be a music director that prefers the full flexibility in having yourself or someone else as rehearsal pianist at each rehearsal. Of course, that's your choice. 
So now we have the tracks recorded, we then need to look at the best way to use these tracks in the rehearsal period itself. In the next video, we will look at the software I use to play these tracks at rehearsals, marking up your score to match the recordings and the best way I found anyway for using these tracks in your rehearsals and using them to get the very best, of course, from your company. See you next time.